<sighs> Hello. Welcome back to Go Again Gaming. Hopefully the uh, the sound is better today. Uh, yesterday I recall I didn't realise I recorded basically my whole intros on my uh, my Razer Keo camera, which doesn't have a great mi microphone. But I'm doing it on the GoPro now, so hopefully it's better. Uh, but good morning, day two. Here we go. Um, yesterday uh, for food, I basically had obviously the pork steaks, which um, which were for my breakfast. Um, obviously been drink. I uh, obviously had a milk as well. I got a, got a glass of milk th this morning for breakfast this morning, as well as some other things. But yesterday, obviously, I had the pork steaks, the milk in the morning, then we had the eggs and beef slices from Tesco, and then in the evening, we didn't have steak. We actually had pork belly slices, um, but we did cook the steak. We cooked two steaks, which we're gonna be having for break bit of breakfast and lunch today. There's actually two steaks cut up into little pieces here. Um, so as you can see, well, maybe, maybe you can see that, maybe you can't but that's just basically cut up steak in there, which we're gonna have now for, for, for a bit of breakfast and uh, lunch as well. Very nice. Um, but yeah, um, thank you very much for everybody who's joined me. Please make sure you like and subscribe and all that good stuff if you wanna continue to follow me on this journey. Again, thank you very much to all my patrons out there. Your support is very much appreciated. Um, thank you for supporting these mad things that I do. Hopefully, um, towards the end of the journey, I might feel sort of, um, I might feel, I might feel confident enough to share a before and after. If this works, we'll see. Um, but yeah, I, I, on the on the last video, I did, did get a comment saying, uh, "What was the comment?" I'll have a look now. Actually, I'll flash up the comment as well on the screen today. Um, where is it? So, it is. Uh, Lead Soup says, Be careful with getting health advice from YouTube, bud. There's a lot of bullshit out there and very little is backed by long-term studies. Looking forward to the games, though. I appreciate your concern, Lead Soup. Um, but I have done I have done a lot of uh, research. and stuff. I know it's only on YouTube and internet-based and... But the videos and stuff that I have watched and the stories that I have heard about, um, albeit it is all on the internet still, does have a good hypothesis and anecdote now. Um, the amount of people that have done it. Uh, I know there's not enough, enough sort of long-term uh, long uh, data available to sort of divulge. Uh, but, um, but yeah, the stuff that I have seen and the, um, and the, and the videos that I have watched uh, do come from people that I believe to be intelligent and know what they're doing to a certain degree. Um, now, of course, with any sort of elimination diet, there's going to be some sort of side effects, and I'm going to share those with you as and when we get them, uh, and if we get them, I should say. But it is exactly that. It is an el elimination diet, mainly to just get rid of sugar, mainly. Because I think that is mainly every gamer's issue is the fucking sugary drinks, right? The energy drinks, the monsters and all this and the Coke and, you know, the high sugar stuff, right? So it's, it's essentially a hardcore elimination diet, but also a lazy and easy cooking diet as well. And the fact that I love meat is just one of those things that just sort of goes into it. Um, vegetables I've never really been keen on. Keen on. I remember when I was younger, uh, when my grandma used to make me a roast dinner, which is what we call it in the UK, it's just like a big joint of meat with like vegetables. I used to just, I used to just, be, I used to just be like, I don't want those, Nan. I don't, don't want those vegetables. I just want the meat and the potatoes. You know, I'm very simple. My taste buds are very simple. I do like, you know, intricate foods as I've got older, but I would still just happily eat meat all day, every day, and that's what I'm doing today, um, and every single day, I should say, after that. Uh, but yeah, um, we so uh, so yeah. That's pretty, that's pretty much it for today. Well, obviously, our our food for today is going to be these two steaks cut up. Uh, we probably will get two eggs uh, from uh, from Tesco at lunch at lunchtime. Um, so I'll flash up the image again with the with the date and time, so you know I'm I'm not lying. 
Uh, so we'll probably get some eggs from, from Tesco as well. Uh, might even get them on the way into work today rather than go out at lunch. But then I like to go out for a walk at lunch as well. So who knows? Um, and then for dinner tonight, we've got steaks. <laughs> so we've just got we've just got pure beef, pure beef and eggs today. Um, I might do some eggs with my steaks later. I might just have one steak later and then two eggs, perhaps, or steak and fried egg or something like that. Steak and scrambled egg, something along those lines. It will be steak and egg for uh, for, uh, for 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 dinner tonight. Um, but yeah, thank you very much, everybody who's tuned in. I uh, hope these these videos uh, give you some some form of entertainment. Uh, but speaking of which, we're going to play Flesh and Blood now over on Talishar. So let's go over there. Didn't work. My editing skills are crap, aren't they? So my uh, subpar editing skills have landed me on my Tuesday morning walk to work or walk to the bus stop, which I then get to work. Um, but yeah, uh, we've already eaten both the steaks, which we were supposed to have for lunch and breakfast. So we've already ate both of the steaks for breakfast. That whole box of uh, two steaks was gone uh, in that first video or shortly after that first video that you've just seen. But uh, but yeah, today on Tuesdays, we always have to walk to the bus stop because the person that normally gives me a lift doesn't work on Tuesdays. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, nice little 40 minute brisk walk. And if you ever wanted to know what Az's walking music was and just what Az's music is this year, it is Blessed by a Broken Heart. That is the band. And the song that's going to appear at the top of my Spotify list this year is uh, Days of Thunder, the Midnight cover. Brilliant. Go check it out. Such energy. Anyway, let's get to the Talishar game later on today, shall we? Listen to my own voice. So this, this ramble in the background is the D&D &D session, which uh, me, Red Zone Rogue, Bill from Spike Phillies, the Living Legends podcast, basically, and Kale from Deb Summer Art. Uh, we did a D&D &D session and it is now available on all audio platforms, as well as Red Zone Rogue's uh, channel for the video version. So I definitely go recommend watching that i should be able to show you actually while we're on uh, while we're on the internet here this is my obviously my good friend red zone rogues channel and there it is D D with flesh and blood escape from southmore i would definitely go and recommend checking it out i'm listening to the audio version uh, at the moment um but i'll definitely go and support the video if you can there's a bloody fly in here because they can smell the meat baby cooking steaks uh for tomorrow's uh breakfast and lunch uh, I'm not having any food tonight. I'm just going to be drinking some water tonight. I've had a bit of cheese when I came in, but that's pretty much it. Um, as you can, uh, as you can see, or whether I've put the video in at this point already, I don't know. But today I've had basically two steaks uh, cut up, which you might have saw already, and then I had some corned beef slices and some eggs at lunchtime, and then just got back from work now, and probably not going to be having anything else food-wise. Um, but um, but yeah, I had a little bit of cheese. Uh, it was very nice, but that's pretty much it for me today. I'm not going to have any more food tonight. Um, girlfriend's out at the moment, so I'm just going to get my Talishar game in now. But yeah, the D and D campaign is brilliant, and uh, we filmed episode two. Episode one's available to view and watch and listen to now. We filmed episode two, so that'll be coming out um, imminently. And uh, episode three, we're still yet to film. So that's going to be the big climax for this one shot. But potential to be another campaign going forward. But hey, diddly ho ho, let's go on to Fabrary and load up the uh, the decks and what have you. Um, and again, this is going to be the same deck that I used yesterday. Um, so uh, this is the... Uh, I'm calling it as Azalea, but it's basically just a copy and paste of Levi's list, uh, Levi Rausch. Uh, and I won against the Prism yesterday, so we're going to see how it, well it does today. But uh, let's do this quick and painful, as uh, Baldur's Gate 2 would say. Let's do this quick and painful. 
one of the uh, one of the original voices you can choose for your character on Baldur's Gate 2. Uh, so we're playing against Lexi Pocoyo. We're playing against. Okay, we'll just go first, I think, just to hope for that dominated uh, thing. So we're just going to use sleep darts, uh, lace with frailty, and then lace of inertia as well. We still need one more card in here, so let's just put in a. Should we put in C and C's? Why not? Let's put in CNCs as well. So running with 62 cards. Uh, uh, I think that's okay. We'll soon find out. Um, but uh, let's good luck, have fun, and uh, and see how this goes. This could be a quick one. This could be a very, very quick one. But um, there was a stat out today. I think it was compiled from February stats. But Lexi, across the board, has just the best winning percentage out of all heroes. Um, I think that was. Uh, I think I saw some data on Twitter. I don't know where it was from, but hey, hey, hey ho. Uh, so let's just activate Death Dealer here. We're going to pitch away the, uh, the Sleep Dart to load in the Infecting and draw. Uh, so we can come in for about 11 damage here with the blood with two Blood Rots on hit. So it's quite a quite a big swing. Uh, they are running the perch grapplers as well, just for a little bit of extra defense against our on hits as well, I expect. Um, but yeah, just looking to resolve the death dealer here before we draw a card. But yeah, what we can threaten here is uh, quite a lot of damage, but I guess they've got the the, the, the hands to block with in the, st in the first turn, right? Uh, oh, we can knock the death whistle, so we can get a dominated arrow. Uh, with a buff behind it, so I think we are going to do that. So let's just knock the Death Whistle. Let's go get a card on top. Uh, and let's opt for Red in the Ledger, of course. Let's go and get that bad boy. It means it can only activate one action next turn, so let's go get that. We'll activate his alias, give it Dominate. I don't know whether this, whether this is the right thing to do, but again, going first is always good with Azalea. Uh, so let's premeditate. To potentially fill our arsenal again, and then we'll fire the Red and the Ledger. Probably should have braced the belief to that turn just to get the 10 damage across. Um, but uh, but hey ho, we should have probably done that. That's that that's similar to how I started the uh, that my calling experience was uh, was that was that way. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna we're gonna come in for eight dominated. They're gonna play an Art of War. Okay, maybe making their cards more defensive. Probably making their cards more defensive, but Art of War is a nice one to see in the starting hand because it can't block for anything. So they've only got one card to block with from hand. Or oh, they're undoing their actions. They're doing all sorts here to try and stop this from happening. But a dominated Red in the Ledger sh probably should have cracked the braces in that first turn because, yeah, the difference between 8 and 10 is quite a lot. Um, you know, the, the braces could then basically equal the Perch Grapplers if they don't want to take the hit early on. Uh, because this could set the tempo, but eight dominate still with one card hand in block. That's blocking for four, blocking for two with the perch grappler. So yeah, probably should have blocked with the uh, should have used the braces of belief, uh, but uh, they're still going to leak two damage here by the looks of it. They are blocking with new horizon as well. Holy moly, they do definitely want to take more than one action next turn if they're blocking with new horizon straight off the bat. So that is a testament to I should have used braces of belief there uh, because that extra two block would have got over the top. Bit of a shame, but hey ho. And now I've got a handful of buffs. Oh no, that's not a follow up that I want to see. Three of a kind as well. That is not good. Um, so they're going to be able to fire loads of arrows at me this turn and take the tempo right back here because I've got stuff that does not block at all. Um, we just need to we just need to stop this now, basically. So we got we got nothing. This is we, we've probably lost now. We've probably lost now as a result of that. Uh, I'm not sure if we are going to be able to get back into this now. I know it's very, very early to say that, but I think that's just that was a pivotal, pivotal situation there. Not having any crack back at all. Uh, we can block, but still take damage. So uh, it's just no point. We might as well just block, haven't we? We might as well just try and block here. But we've got one card. It's just not going to be, not going to be enough, unfortunately. They are ending their turn there. Uh, I mean, I guess they can only Arsenal one card. Um, they can't have two cards now, but still, it's not ideal to, to, to have to block that much. We're just going to Arsenal this and pray for a better day. Um, let's see what happens here. So they've got a four life lead. All of their equipment is down the drain, though, so they are going to trench away the card they just Arsenal to gain a resource. And they're going to activate Voltaire with that resource. Okay. Loading in a sleep dart. 
Um, they're going to use... They're going to give go again to that sleep dart. Okay, so it's coming in for five. I guess we can block for six. Let's put a Searing Shot on our graveyard and a Remorseless in our graveyard for Codex. So let's block that. So that's fully blocked. And then we can still block six now if we want to. Um, if we want to, that is. Uh, we can see and see next turn as well. Drill Shot coming in for four. Five. Okay. Uh, we can also Drill Shot. So I guess... They're not going to have an arsenal after this, though, so I think we just... Uh, I think we just... Do we just take this? We can drill shot for six next turn, or we can C and C. That's not going to be enough, is it? So we can drill shot and draw a card. I think we just take it, and we just take the hit on the armor, because they've already wasted a lot of their armor anyway, so I guess we just take the damage here. We can still sort of wrestle back a little bit of life differential on this turn with the fact that we can play Rain Raisers out of our arsenal. We can opt first as well, which is also good, which means we can also get a buff on the Bracers, potentially. Um, so we'll see what Crosstrap has to say with this card. Um, and we're good, we can draw this card as well. We can draw the Spire Sniping, so we don't want to be drawing that. So let's just play out the Rain Raisers, first of all. Um, let's activate the Tunic, put the Drill Shot in and draw a card, and hopefully... This might be a buff that we draw here. It's not, unfortunately. Uh, so we can fire this off for six, or we could brace us to see what the top card is and maybe threaten an Azalea. Uh, let's let's just do that. Well, I believe in you. I believe. What have we got? It's a blue. Of course it is. Of course it fucking is. All right, then. Let's go. At least we can potentially threaten the trench block value here with a six. Uh, or we can give it go again and C and C as well. Let's do that. Let's do that. I completely forgot about that, baby. So yeah, we'll do that. Put that on the trench, and then we'll uh, then we'll C and C pitching this. So coming in for another six. They are going to take that damage. Of course they are. Okay. Well, we've got the life back, but they've got a four card hand, Voltaire, shenanigans. So we're going to come in with two things. I expect we'll sleep dart first of all. Uh, this is going to put us down to 26 and we lose our hero ability. I think that's okay. Sorry, 20, 20, it is 26, yeah. We lose our hero ability, but I think that's okay. And now they are coming in with a drill shot again. And that's going with the plus one attacks. That's coming in for five. So we're going to have a seven life differential, which I think is okay. Um, because we can load the bolt and shot in, draw a card and see what's on top of not death whistle. Uh, okay, yeah, let's just do that. Let's just take damage. Doesn't have go again, so we go down to 21. 21 plays 28 here with knock death whistle in hand, so we can, we can do some dominated stuff. I imagine that that's probably not going to be a defensive card in their arsenal, so we could actually use knock the death whistle here to effect. But let's, we're going to draw a card anyway, so I guess we activate death dealer and float some resources here. So we're going to activate death dealer, pitching a blue. Load in the bolt and shot, see what we draw. E strike, okay. Uh, so we can lace this with blood rot and give it go again. And worst case scenario, what we can then do is then play knock, load in the, the E strike, and then go get a card and dominate it. So they are going to take that, which is eight damage because of the blood rot, basically. Uh, we get to reload a card here, so we probably will reload the, um, the enlightened strike, I think. Uh, then we'll flip up that to see what we've got on top. A codex. All right. Okay. Uh, that's good because it will give them a frailty token. So I think that's probably the play over the knock. But we can't. We can't. Um, we can't activate Azalea anywhere. I completely forgot about that. So we can't actually do that. So let's just e strike for uh, for seven. I think. Or should we just uh, should we draw a card? draw a card. Nah, buff power. Let's just buff power, baby. They're just going to take it. Of course they are. Okay. Alright, so 15 plays 21. Here comes a Falcon Wing. Threatening 3. I guess we just take that at this point. Uh, Art of War pumps up to 4 damage. 
They are still going to take two at the end of this turn, so I guess that effectively puts us on 23 life instead. So I guess that's okay. So they're basically on 13 life at the moment because of the Blood Rot simulating that. Heat Seeker is going to replace their Arsenal if it hits. Uh, coming in for seven. It does have go again. Uh, I think we need to block this. Uh, we can Codex next turn as well, so I think I think we will have to block this. So let's just block it all. Block all of it for eight. Fully blocked. Codex. Okay. So I get a thing back as well, but then I won't actually be able to play that Codex thing unless I get a uh, drill shot or searing shot. So I guess I can get a searing shot back, can't I? So let's get that back. Discard my Codex. It's a game of codexes, and they've got the searing shot back, and so have I. But they're going to lose. They're going to lose two damage from the blood rot here. Um, so they're going to lose blood rot. I think they might just win this race, though. Unfortunately, because uh, they, they get to ponder, they get to refill their arsenal now, and I don't. And I've also got a frailty, which also devalues the thing that I got back from Codex. So that's a little bit of a shame. Um, so yeah, we can at least flip, flip some up, see what's on top for the defense. At least it's a rabble. Uh, we get that to the bottom and then just fire this at them for three. Um, so it's going to be four instead because of the on hit. But they probably don't care about that right now. They're probably just happy to take the damage and just crap, clap back even harder with four cards. With five cards even. So this is probably the race lost, unfortunately. Rain raises. Here it is. Three of a kind. No, but still rain raises on a five card hand is probably game over for me, unfortunately. Um... The big, the big mistake I think was the um, was the fact that uh, I didn't block with um, I didn't I didn't use the braces turn one. I should have used the braces turn one because the braces were lost in this game by revealing a blue randomly. Um, so if you got that turn one, uh, if you got that turn one braces for two, if you're on a dominated arrow on turn one, that's probably the best play you can really achieve out of that. I'm just going to take seven damage here, unfortunately. Not much I can do. Shock Charmers. All right. I take more damage, I guess. Uh, go down to three. And that's pretty much the race over. Um, I mean, I've still got a turn to Arsenal and pass. Uh, but I think the Onslaught is going to be too great now unless they've got a whiff hand. Uh, and I've got, I haven't got, I have got too much to really clap back. I've got a Tunic next turn, but I don't think that's going to be enough. I've got a Codex in hand as well. So I guess... Block. We can block for four, so we can block for four here. We can still block for five, but that's not going to be enough, I don't think. It's not going to be enough. If it's a searing shot, okay. Yeah, so that's for our premeditate as well. So that's, yeah, that's pretty much, pretty much, I think, dead time. So I block for five, take three, and die. GG. Yeah, I'm dead. I am dead good game good game I died um, so yeah the the main takeaway from that was uh, using the braces turn one because they they basically blocked of their entire equipment suite including New Horizon um, but it just goes to show that Lexi can just win that damage race and I didn't draw any um, I didn't draw any sort of interactive cards like Red and the Ledgers and what have you. Uh, the only Red and the Ledger I saw that game was the one that didn't hit and you need those to hit really to be able to sort of pressure Lexi's um, at least because once you get into that race it's nigh on impossible to, to sort of claw it back. I did manage to do a little bit of damage um, and swing a little bit but it just wasn't enough to keep up with that with that sort of I do damage, you do damage, I do damage, you do damage. It's just not enough against Lexi. Um, but um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. So thank you very much for tuning in. Please make sure you like and subscribe and all that good stuff. If you stuck around to the very end, thank you very much. Thank you to all the patrons on the channel as well. It means a lot and it really does, um, it really does keep the channel going. But uh, yeah, we're going to see you tomorrow to do it all over again here on Go Again Gaming, eating and playing flesh and blood every single day until Worlds. Until next time. I've been Az. You've been watching Going and Gaming. We'll see you soon. Cheers.